Hello, this is David Hale with Tech Dive TV. This is Tech Dive TV Tuesday. Today's Tech Dive that we're going to take is about a new genre of computing. It's called wearable computing. I guess it started out with Google Glass. Now, Google Glass is a technology that you wear on your face, much like glasses. It has a control unit on the side over here, and it has a small display right in front of your eye. It's kind of a funny looking thing. Let's take a look at it. Now, some of the features of Google Glass are that it can take pictures, it can play music, it can record video for a very short amounts of time, I believe like 10 seconds, it can display notifications and things like text messages and emails, things like that. So it's useful but not everybody can get it. Currently, Google has it out for people who are explorers, Google, Google Glass explorers. Um, they are able to get glass for $1,500, and it's not as functional as it will be in the future, but these Google Glass explorers are people who want to test it out or write applications for it or things like that. So it's not really available yet for the consumer. But that may be coming in 2014 or 2015. Now, they've paid $1,500 for theirs, but rumor has it that the consumer price for glass will be much lower. Our next delve into wearable computing is the smartwatch. Now, Sony has had a smartwatch for quite a long time. There's one called the Pebble, and the newest one is the Galaxy Gear. Smartwatches typically pair with your cell phone. Uh, the Galaxy Gear pairs with a Samsung Galaxy Note 3 and soon the Galaxy S4. But that's the only two phones it'll pair with. So it's not exactly the most dynamic piece of equipment. It's also rather large and bulky. But some of the things that it'll do for you is it'll tell time. Really? Tell time for a watch? That's amazing. Also, it'll do things like tell you when you have a notification, like a text message. You can read your text messages. You can deal with your emails on the watch. You can even interact with it as a phone if you pair it with your either your Galaxy Note 3 or your Galaxy S4. It also has a camera. Why you'd want a camera on your watch, I don't know. But uh, Samsung is going to release another Galaxy Gear, the Galaxy Gear 2, in a few months. So we'll see what happens with that. Also, Apple is rumored to be making an iWatch. And a lot of people are waiting with uh, bated breath to find out what Apple's going to do with their watch. That's different from Samsung and Pebble and Sony. And the last piece of wearable technology we're going to talk about today is fitness technology. Things like the Nike Fuel Band the Jawbone Up, or the Fitbit. Let's take a look at the Fitbit. The Fitbit Flex tracks your steps, your calories consumed, and your sleep, which is kind of cool. It has, obviously, a wristband design. With a little LED screen, the lights show you how much progress you're making toward your daily goal. There is Bluetooth 4.0 syncing. It can only do direct sync with iPhone, Samsung Galaxy S3, or Galaxy Note. The Flex software on the phone gives you ways to analyze all your stats, and people love all that data. So these fitness technologies will do things like measure your activity, measure your steps, measure your sleep, how well you're sleeping at night. And it'll let you do this either on, through a website or through your uh, mobile phone and allow you to keep track of all your statistics about your fitness. Um, actually, some cell phones are doing that now. I own a Galaxy Note 3, and I have an application on there called S Health, and it does the same thing without having to buy another technology. The thing is, you have to have your phone on you all the time, uh, so it's almost a wearable technology in itself. But there's also one thing you have to w be careful of. If you're using Google Glass and a smartwatch like the Galaxy Gear or the Sony smartwatch and the Fitbit or the Fuel Band or the Jawbone Up, there's one thing you must be aware of, and it's this. I am Locutus of Borg. From this time forward, you will service us. 
You don't want to look like the Borg. So choose wearable computing wisely. Don't look like you have technology all over your face and all over your body. I mean, we're humans. We should interact together as humans, not being putting all this technology between us. Wearable technology, it might be good. Mm, for me, not quite yet. This is David Hale with Tech Dive TV. Have a great day.